This Week in Agribusiness. Serving America's most essential industry with agriculture broadcasters Max Armstrong and Orion Sandelson and featuring agricultural meteorologist Greg Solier. This Week in Agribusiness is brought to you by ADM. Hello everyone, welcome to this weekend's edition of This Week in Agribusiness, where coming up we'll update you not only on the news of agriculture, but a close look at some of the market factors and a very close look at weather. My, what a spring, Ori, and this is a tough one. It continues to be such a contrast, and again, in the heart of the corn bean belt, that Mississippi River is the dividing point. 80% corn planted in Iowa, 10% in Illinois. I talked to one farmer in northern Illinois who's been farming 53 years, and he said, Never has he had a year like this where he didn't do one bit of field work before the 1st of May. Well, it's providing plenty of time for producers to sit in the office at the computer and to file comments, if they are so inclined, about that proposal of the Environmental Protection Agency to increase the percentage of ethanol in fuel to boost that blending rate from 10% up to 15%. That comment period is winding down. Time is of the essence now, as was pointed out to us by Steve Rue. He chairs the Ethanol Committee of the National Corn Growers Association. The EPA uh, comment period uh, goes through May 21st and gives a, uh, producers a chance to uh, chime in, uh, let their uh, voices be heard and uh, let their legislators know that uh, uh, corn growers have the potential of, uh, of still providing plenty of fuel, plenty of food, and plenty of fiber for this country. And uh, we need to let our legislators know that we have the capabilities to do this uh, with the EPA waiver of up to 15% uh, would allow us to uh, further reach our potential as corn growers and they can certainly find out more information at uh, www.ncga.com, get on our learner's website, and that will help you send a message to our legislators in Washington. That website, again, in case you missed it, is ncga.com. And Steve reminds us that there are those co-products from the refining of ethanol, that there is that feed that is created, and sometimes that gets forgotten in all of the discussions about ethanol. The more we talk about it locally and the more that uh, our, uh, our urban friends um, sometimes get a little confused on, uh, on maybe that the uh, corn that we use uh, for ethanol uh, just vanishes when uh, you know there is a food product that is uh, developed as well on the back end of an ethanol plant. And so that the more ethanol we produce, we're actually making more livestock feed along with it. So, uh, you know, there's kind of a fine line there, and, uh, but it's our job as corn growers to educate our urban neighbors and, and certainly our legislators who are making these very important decisions on our behalf that uh, we have the potential in this country to uh, certainly ease the uh, imported oil. And Steve Rue, who farms west of Chicago, says that debate about ethanol's environmental impact is more and more swinging in the favor of farmers. The potential is enormous. Our uh, trend line yields are increasing every year. And we're uh, not only are our yields increasing, but our uh, fertilizer intake for the producing those bushels is actually decreasing. So um, when we go into these uh, debates on uh, carbon footprint, uh, you know, the corn made from uh, or ethanol made from corn, our carbon footprint is looking better and better every year with uh, new advances in seed technology and fertilizer technology as well. So. Uh, you know, as, as this debate moves on, I, I feel that uh, corn to ethanol is going to come out stronger and stronger. Steve Rue, he chairs the Ethanol Committee of the National Corn Growers Association. And again, that website through which you can file comments about the ethanol usage is ncga.com.